Hi, this is my friend Winford, uh, an artist from the Valleys. He's a Medway artist, his name's Winford Vaughan Thomas. I'm Sonia Roseman, an actress from Rochester, and today we're going to learn about his work. Hello. Hello, very nice to be here, Sonia. Good, good. And very good to have me. Right, so basically, if you, um, if you tell me about where you were born, where you were brought up, that kind of thing. Well, I was brought up in the Rhondda Valley, which everybody knows was a coal mining area. My father was, wasn't a coal miner, he was a mechanic, but my grandfathers were coal miners, they all worked underground. And sometimes when I'm painting my picture, I think I'm working underground myself. <laughs> right. So where did you first get your, your feeling and the love of art? Um, <clears throat> that's always been there, ever since I was a little boy. I've been drawing since, like, well, I, I can't remember when I started drawing, I've always been drawing, like, or scribbling, or drawing on my mother's wallpaper. I bet you love that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and who were your first influences? Um, the main influence in my life, really, was my surroundings, the colour, yeah. Although, in the Rhondda in those days, it was mostly black and white with coal tips. But Didn't want to work there then? No, I had a great fear <laughs> of working underground. I was always terrified of all these monsters underground. <laughs> <laughs> um, and who would you say your favourite artist? Because I know there's more than one, isn't there? Oh, yeah, I can't really say that, but I think Picasso, Turner, Michael, all the, all the Premier League guys, I like, you know, Chagall, Matisse. Uh, this, it, uh, hopefully, it reflects throughout my work, like, you know, but also my work reflects poetry as well and Celtic imagination, which you can see in the way they use colour. Absolutely. So, what would you say is a normal day in Winford's life then? Well, after I've finished having my nightmares, I get up and have my, uh, <laughs> <Nightmares>. <laughs> my boiled egg. <laughs> <laughs> then I've got to feed the dog. He's bonkers. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> totally bonkers, my dog is, but we love him to bits. Yes, and then, 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 you know, then I've got to go and scrub the floors. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you lived in Amsterdam for a while, tell me about Oh, that. I did, yes, I did. I ventured over there, yes. I wanted to go to Amsterdam because I've always liked Vincent van Gogh's work. I've always liked Rubens' work. I've liked a lot of the Dutch painters, especially van Gogh with his colour and also, like, there's such sadness in that story. In any kind of... <laughs> and um, I remember that you, you told me that you went to Italy and you had a strange feeling. Oh, yes, as you yeah, walked Italy. When I went to Florence, I'd been there before. I knew all the streets. I thought, oh, yeah, I know where this is. And it was like deja vu on a mega scale. Yeah. That and is um, so I'm going, yes, um, yeah, I definitely lived in Florence once upon a time. And who were the favourite artists from Florence? Well, not just artists. I didn't know, but great, great poets like Dante. At one time, I couldn't read Dante because Dante would just picked me out. Oh, he was also, also major, like you know, in my imagination. And Shelley was the same, like you know. And I will read some poetry later on, and you'll probably find out why I mm. like Dante and Shelley. And so, um, also, your artwork depicts a lot of what's going on in the news and. All of that kind of thing lately. Yeah, Can you I, tell me a bit about that. Yeah, please? well, I think, well, being an artist, like Picasso said, you're not, you're not one dimension, you're loads of dimensions, and there's a lot strong political side to me as well, and I'm very aware of what's going on in the world with the refugee crisis and the poor people and the rest of it. A lot of my work um, hopefully expresses their plight and their soul, you know, and a way of not not making people aware of it. Most people are aware of it, but with art, it's a different thing. Art can become subjective and objective. Um, mm. And also, you're not quite like other artists that only do one kind of style, as in, you know, like Andy no. Warhol or anybody else. No, you do many I, styles, don't you? I walk through many genres. I walk through many valleys, as you can say, but I'm, hopefully I'm walking to the same goal. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Hang on. I'll find the rest of my question. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, yeah, so right. you actually write poetry and you play the guitar, don't you, as well? So you're yeah, quite a creative I've, butterfly. I've got, I've got all the monsters at work inside me, right? I've got the poet, playwright, musician, painter and politician. See, for my one. sins. Yeah. <laughs> for my sins. I'm carrying four or five crosses. Um, and I'm always born with big shoulders. I think that you should show me some of your paintings here, your favourite ones, and explain what they mean to you and, and how the ideas have come around. Mm. Well, in this exhibition here, um, my love of Cubism, which is reflected in the jazz musicians, and my love of colour, in my love of Turner's work. Um, basically what I'm doing is fusing both worlds together with this picture here. Mm. See? In it, but <laughs> One last question. Yes. So p when people say you're bonkers like Van Gogh then, what would you say? Oh, to me that's a compliment. <laughs> really Fabulous. Oh, and uh, when is your next gallery? My next exhibition? Yep, and where, where else? Well, don't know. Who knows what the Lord's got in store for me? Maybe you, the Medway will open up. <laughs> okay, so watch this space. Um, we'll put the link up on this. And uh, thank you very much thank to you. my dear friend. Well thank you. Yaki da. <laughs> right. As, as a Welsh man, I'm blessed with this and I started to write poetry after my father's death. This poem is about my father. It's called Lose Boy. The small wooden box harbours a giant man, a mountain reduced to rubble. Lucas spread through the arteries of his body and blighted his bones. My father was motionless. His fingernails bent, his eyes burned through me. I could not lie. Black cars on a hillside underneath the bonnet he worked. Black ties, suits and shawls underneath he was burnt. Uncle Jack, Uncle Billy, Uncle Di, Uncle Em and aunts who cry for the youngest brother. In a passage I stood until cold. We all gather together and look at the young minister, a Welsh Baptist, a tender man surrounded by the Thomases. His words were short. His eyes were aware of the ghost. The light reflected in his gold rimmed glasses. I stood there and mined to the Welsh hymn. Seventy-five reeds, a multicoloured conga line. We drove to Trial Cemetery. Little boy on a skateboard did not watch. A small wooden box harbours a giant man. Eight foot deep brass plate reflecting the morning sun. Clay walls, nature's cell. Robust faces shake hands with the past. Oh, that's Lou's boy, the tall one. He's been away. I stood there in silence looking over the valley. My old school gone. Burnt down arson. An eye for an eye. Black suits and no rain. Four brown snakes have crawled out of the hole, one twisting around the minister's leg. Four brown ropes to lower him down. Back to the house for sandwiches and tea. A nervous shuffling of bodies trying to escape the ultimate. It's like a party without its host. How do we recollect the past when eating cake and looking at per paper serviettes and silver plates? Have you had your cup of tea, Winford? Oh no, I wanted six pints of beer. Then I would have really enjoyed my father. Off to the pub. The sun went one way. Some went another. I never knew he had died. I only saw him the other day. Well, well. We only knew this morning. Never mind. We sat and drank. 
And I saw my sister fall asleep. It was all over the worry. The operation which had cut him in two were the never healing stitches. Only the memory was left now of a man, Lewis Thomas, who cheated death at 23. That's what inspired me to write poetry. Gone straight, like I said, when I worked in the West End, I always cut down to Bond Street to catch a train to Victoria. And Bond Street was full of magic, especially in the windows. Paintings, mannequins, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, Bond Street. Bond Street is inhabited by aliens, some on their knees, others performing acts of various description. Long black fingernails, a preached elbow, long black eyelashes, black as goldfish in space. Long ivory necks, a double-edged sword dividing two plastic breasts. Long narrow hips, black as a banker's briefcase. Small pointed shoes attached to swans' necks. Time warping on the street. More life in the windows than on the pavement. Crowds of people all deaf and dumb. Who work relentlessly for rewards of plastic love with red lips. Plastic expressions of love. Glass windows and beautiful bangled cardboard boxes just asking to be converted into luxury. A race, it must be the national, painted horses and carved dogs, cool street, jump onto the back and ride the mannequin. Bond Street, the tailor's dumb army will advance. Pavement pacer, along his, his peering pleasures of precious practical pavements of perfection. Neatly swept and guarded by gilt edge windows calling to your eye. Bravo, beautiful buildings, expensive hats and coats, polished brass and cut glass, old lamps for nail, old band, old bond for nail. <laughs> on the last one, when we metaphysical ones, when we metaphysical. No, a rap poem, a rap poem, rap. Yeah, it's a rap. rap. What makes people crack? Social deprivation, a world of without race vision, deep in destruction, multicolored paralysis. It sounds like a rap, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it is. My... It's correct. yeah. <laughs> multicolored <laughs> paralysis under a jurisdiction that leaves freedom only from frustration, that believes in liberation without conditions, makes conclusions without disillusion. What makes people tick? A sale above industrialization, to eat without contamination, to seek salvation without thoughts of starvation, equal distribution to wealth and class, classless civilization, without no corruption and retaliation, helping with carination, without looking for capitulation. <laughs> that was a tongue twister. Rap Thomas, It's a wrap, guys. It's a wrap. Let's wrap, boy. Brilliant. Tongue twister, though, was great. Fucking done, That was good.